everybody, it's Kelly from Let's Get Clacking and in today's video I'm going to walk you through some of the most basic things in Silhouette Studio, how to exactly set up your first test cut. Well, let's get clacking. This is what Silhouette Studio Basic Edition looks like. I'm using the 4.4.270 edition, but it's essentially Silhouette Studio 4.4 and most of them should be very similar with just a couple of bug fixes in between the different versions. I find this version to be very stable, so if you're having issues with your Silhouette Studio version, you might want to consider using this one. So as we start with the basics, this is what your Silhouette Studio will more than likely look like when you first open it. This dark gray section here with the arrow at the top signals that you have your cutting mat on and the white section is where your media would go. So when you place your vinyl onto your cutting mat, it should look exactly like this. Just to get a brief lay of the land, we're going to quickly go over what the different options are. So on the left hand side, we have your shape creators. So you can create squares, you know, circles, etc. You have your freehand tool, so if you wanted to draw something freehand, you could use that. Your font, so you can create your texts. You can add little notes onto your Silhouette Studio. Eraser and the knife tool, so if you want to erase something or cut something apart, you can do that there. Obviously, we've got point editing, and if you want to see more about point editing, check the video that I'm going to link at the top. It's a little bit more of an intermediate, so... Once you've gotten the hang of this, then you can go and check that one out. At the top bar, we have all this, the, the standard things. So we've got file with many different options. We have edit. So again, pretty standard across most computer programs. You have copy, paste, delete, select all, select by color, which we're not going to go over today. And that's going to be reserved for a future tutorial where we're going to be going to over more intermediate things. And then your preferences. Your preferences can be accessed from here as well as in the bottom right of the corner. You can click on the little cogwheel. These are quite literally your preferences. So if you want yours in English, you can have it in English and you can select from many different other languages. Your default save location will either be to your library or to your hard drive. I personally prefer a hard drive because if something corrupts in my Silhouette Studio, then at least I always have that as a backup. Your unit of measurement will be dependent on whether you use the metric system or not. Mine is set to centimeters because I prefer to use the metric system. Your print resolution is how many dots per inch that you use. 300 dpi is generally okay. 600 to 1200, those are higher ones, which means that your print quality will be better. Then you can have a lot of the defaults. So your page orientation will either default to landscape or it'll default to portrait. Nine times out of ten people leave it on portrait, but I choose automatically. Your blade type, if you're always using an auto blade, you can select that here. Or if you are using the ratchet or the premium blade, they are essentially the same thing. Premium blade just lasts longer than the ratchet blade, so you can select ratchet blade there. Display settings, you probably won't need to change much there. Import settings, you can change it here. Um, depends on how you want to, but at the moment I wouldn't suggest playing with any of this. Tools, this is very much going to be personal preference. However, when it comes to these settings, I would recommend changing them to choose select. Because as an example, if after you're creating a shape, what this will do is it'll say continue drawing shapes. So if I've created a square, now I can create another square without having to go and select that tool again, and then I can create another square and another square and another square, but I would have to either press escape or I would have to actually manually go and choose, choose the select tool again. So depends on how you prefer to handle those things that you would need to change that there. If you prefer to have it deselect after creating a shape, then you can toggle it to choose select. These are pretty much using the exact same logic. You can do those. This is another one for me it comes down to personal preference. So when drag selecting, select shapes touching the drag box. So if we go back here, the moment that this block comes into contact with any part of that square, we can see that it highlights the square, which means that when I'm going over shapes like this, it will highlight all three of those, four of those without highlighting that one. But another option is to select the shapes enclosed by the drag box. Okay, so what that means is that the moment that you touch it, it doesn't select the box. So you have to select the entire shape before it selects the box. And that might be a more suitable option for you if that's the method that you want to go with. I wouldn't recommend playing with any of the other tools. You can leave these as they are and the advanced things I definitely wouldn't change at the moment. Hi guys, 
editing Kelly here, um, going through all the footage that I took, I realized that I left out a few important things, so I just want to sneakily add these in before the video goes live. So I obviously went through the edit panel, but I didn't go through the view panel. So the view panel just covers some things that you'd be able to see on your screen. As an example, the rulers. So the rulers are these things on the side here. Crosshairs, I know they annoy a lot of people. It's those little lines that show you exactly where your mouse is. And there are many other things. So, you know, the different grid options you can show there as well. Show grid, snap to grid, show guides. You know, you can really go through these and a lot of them are available through other sections as an example the show print border and show cut border those are available through your page setup so you shouldn't really have to worry about that too much there and then we have the panels section so the panels is essentially exactly what is on the side here so we can see the trace panel so you know when you are bringing in an image from somewhere else you're dropping it in tracing it to get the cut lines that's essentially that panel that would go on there and then you have object. So let's say you have a picture selected and you want to rotate it. You can then change that here, but you can also change it through one of the panels on the side here. So you can use the transform panel to rotate things. So a lot of those are pretty much duplicates of things that are there as well as on the side. Um, and then the row just below it are pretty much just your quick go-to settings. So if you have two different objects, let me actually turn these crosshairs off because they're driving me nuts. Let's say you have, you know, a star and then you also have a circle or a squircle, I guess, <laughs> not a circle, and you select both of them. A whole bunch more options show up on the page as well. So you'll be able to then center them to each other, center them to the page. You can group them, bring them to the front, send them to the back. So there's lots of many shortcut options that you can use here. Play around with those a little bit. Those are typically ones that I use quite a lot, especially centering and bringing to the front, sending to the back, etc. So those are those options there. And then, of course, one of the other things that I didn't mention in the video was importing a PNG or an SVG or something like that. So if you import a transparent PNG, it's just a picture with a transparent background and you dump it into Silhouette Studio, you can pretty much go straight into the send panel and it will have cut lines on it already. So that's really useful when it comes to that. If you're using a JPEG, so like just a standard picture, a picture that you've taken as an example, you'll have to then trace it and add cut lines and things like that to it yourself. Um, but I'll go over tracing in a future video. It's something that I use almost every single time I play with Silhouette Studio. So I, I feel that that function really deserves its own video because there are a lot of things that you can you can do to play around with that. Back to the other footage. My hair is going to grow a little bit. You'll see that in a second. So the panels at the top here, the store will quite literally take you to the design store. The library will open up your library of designs that you have saved. Obviously, I've had Silhouette Studio for quite a while, so there's lots of designs in there. And the send panel is when you want to send it to your Silhouette device to cut, whether it's your Cameo or your portrait or one of those devices. You will also notice that within the send panel, we have these dark red lines. The dark red lines are showing exactly where your device will cut. Let's say I didn't want this block to cut. So I click on the block and you see it's just barely highlighted. On the side here, it's selected cut. So if I didn't want to cut this block, I can just select no cut. And you see how it goes a, a faded red. If I didn't want any of this to cut, I would highlight them all and select no cut. And because I have no dark red lines on this page, that means that when I have to send it to the, the Cameo, nothing will happen. It will start up, it'll go ee, and then it'll just stop. If you want to cut something, you have to always have at least one design selected on the cut panel. When you do send something to cut, you need to make sure that the material selected corresponds with what you're trying to cut. As an example, if you're trying to cut cardstock, you wouldn't want to have vinyl frosted selected because the cut settings, the depth of the blade is very different to what you would need to have in order to cut cardstock. So depending on what you're cutting, you want to select from this list something there. So let's say we're going with cardstock. We can change the action to cut because I don't have my cameo on at the moment. And then the tool we can either have it on automatic, which means that if you're using a Cameo 4, it will detect that you have the auto blade or that you have the craft blade. So I'm just going to put it on auto blade. 
just to show you what I mean. And you see this section here then appears. That 4 means that it will work on a blade depth of 4. The force is how much pressure will be exerted onto the blade to cut it, and the speed is how fast the cameo will cut. This little triangle TP looking thing and the little square next to it are the overcut settings. You can see how it, it's a triangle with the points that go over the edges slightly. Now this means that what it'll do is it'll start a little bit above the cutting point and it'll end a little bit past the cutting point. So if we take this square as an example, the blade will actually be put down 0.1 millimeter above where this block starts and it'll end 0.1 millimeter past where this line ends to make sure that you're cutting those corners correctly because sometimes you might miss it by a fraction of a millimeter and that means that when you're trying to weed it when you're trying to pull it off the vinyl you might struggle to get it off especially if you're having very intricate cut settings with a block like this you probably won't have a problem but when it comes to something like a mandala where it's got hundreds of cut lines and lots of little corners and sharp edges you would need to have that cut setting on. Passes means how many times it will complete the loop. So if you have this set to two, it means that it will cut each four of these lines twice. And then if you're wanting to go to more cut settings, you can open that and have more of them. So track enhancing generally is used when you have media that is overlapping the edges. So what it'll do is it'll run the mat through, it'll run the mat back, through and then back to make sure that the rollers can actually go onto the mat all the way to the bottom. Disable smart cut is honestly not something that I've played with very much. I wouldn't worry about it at this stage. Line segment overcut, that's exactly what we spoke about. And then we also have sketch, which is what you would use for your sketch pens your, or just your pen adapter and stipple that you won't use at this point. So I'm not going to cover it. We can then click the X at the top to get back to our cut page. When we have our cameo selected, it will say ready in green. And then this block will be open for us to be able to send it to cut. Within the send panel, you can also make use of the test cut feature. However, I don't advise on using this method. If you want to go over the test cut feature, I would suggest you take a look at my getting the perfect test cut video just to make sure that you are getting the right cut settings for the material that you are using. So back to the design panel, what we're going to do is take a look at the page setup and then we're going to briefly just run through some of the more important tabs on the side, the ones that I use regularly and the ones that I think that you might use. The top we have the page setup. And in this tab, it shows you what machine that you're using. If you have it set on auto, it'll automatically detect the machine that you're using. As an example, my machine is the Cameo 4. And when I have my Cameo 3 plugged in, it will show up as Cameo 3. Or you can manually choose whichever one of the machines that you're using. The next is the cutting mat. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that is the dark gray border that we see at the back. If you are using your cutting mat, you need to make sure that your cutting mat is enabled. Because if you are not using your cutting mat, your Cameo won't cut in the correct place. So that's a very important thing to remember. Then the next is your media size. Your media size should correspond with what you are trying to cut. If you try to cut a small piece of paper, let's say an A5 piece of paper, then you would want to change your media size to A5 so that you know what area you're working with and where you need to place it on the cutting mat for it to cut properly. You can also manually change the size of your media here if you have something that's an odd shape or that's not a predefined shape. You can change it here. You can change your orientation as well if you are selecting an A4 size. You can have it either portrait or landscape. Um, and then you can also rotate the view if you're wanting to to work with it in a in a slightly more unique way. <laughs> the next thing that you can select is to show the print border. So if you're going to be using your your physical printer to print something, then I would recommend using this because that gray line will then show you the edges of where your printer is able to print. And if you put anything outside of that edge, then it won't print. So that's something very important to remember, especially if you're using print and cut. Then the other one that I almost always have selected is show cut border. That's where the Cameo will end the cutting abilities. So if anything is past that red line, you won't be able to cut it. This is pretty much the most important panel in Silhouette Studio, especially when it comes to being a beginner um, and learning how to use the features. So that's why I'm going over it quite in depth. This tab is the grid settings. So it's something that's also a very personal preference. If you want to make sure that you snap things to the grid, then you can select snap to grid and it will, you see there, it's snapping that to the middle of the grid. Personally, it irritates me, so I leave it off, but it's also, again, personal preference. Or enable smart snapping. So if you want, 
to align certain things if you want to have them in the middle you see those little turquoisey type lines show up that means that you can enable that and have them snap to the other media on the mat i would recommend leaving it on square and not isometric isometric is more if you're using a 3d kind of model so i would leave it at that i have mine set to 2.54 centimeters as that is what one inch is in the metric system just because it's it directly relates to what i see in the cut cutting mat so i leave that there and then you can change the color of the lines as well so if you want them a little bit lighter or if you want them blue you know you green red whatever color you want you can change that there too now we're going on to the print and cut which i'm not going to go over in this video because it's a little bit more advanced i will link a print and cut tutorial if you are ready to take on print and cut then we have other tabs like the pick scan again i'm not going to go over that the color fill panel is definitely something that is useful so if you select a shape you can then change it to green you can select another shape and change it to a pinky color and so on and so forth and it's a lot easier to change as opposed to having to go and select them at the top there and changing them there. You can also use the gradient and then fill patterns as well. So if you want to have a pattern in there, then you can use that. There are many other features that come with Silhouette Studio. So one of, one of the features that you may use the most are the font panel. So when you have the font panel open, you'll just need to select the font tool on the left hand side of the screen and then you can type something in. And then from this panel here, instead of changing it up at the top here, you can just scroll through the different fonts and change them on the side. You can also adjust the line spacing. So if you have more than one line or the character spacing, you can change that there too. There are many, many other things that you can play around with in Silhouette Studio. I would definitely recommend starting to play around with it even before you get your Cameo. So that once you do get your Cameo machine, if you haven't gotten it yet, that you are familiar with how to play around with Silhouette Studio and it's not so overwhelming for you in the beginning. I could probably make this video about three hours long for the sake of sanity, I'm not going to, and I'm going to break them down into videos where I'll go over each of the features in depth as opposed to going over every single feature at the top level. I would definitely recommend just clicking around, learning how to play with them, you know, playing with the offset feature, maybe even playing with the transform feature, know where you can turn things around. The software can be very intimidating, but I think if we just take it one bite at a time, one feature at a time, it can really make your life a lot easier and you can do so much with it. And you can even use this software even if you don't even have a silhouette machine. So you could then get the software, you can export it, and then you could import it into another design program. As an example, if you have business edition, you'd be able to export it to an SVG and you'd be able to then import it into Cricut Design Space and you'd be able to use it for your Cricut machine. So it just shows just how versatile the software actually is and what you can do with it. So I really recommend playing around with it. Once you understand the few basic things that I've just been over today, you can really get a feel for the software and start playing around and making the most amazing things. Thank you so much for watching this whole video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and learned something new. I have lots of beginner tutorials, so if you'd like to check them out, I'll leave a link for you up at the top. If you want to see more of my tutorials in the future, you can subscribe to my channel on this side. On that side, YouTube will show you my latest video and just below that, something that they think that you'll enjoy. Well, until next time, everybody, remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.